so I'm Ian Horrocks. I'm a professor at the University of Oxford. Uh, and I'm working in the area that I suppose is broadly known as knowledge representation and reasoning. Um, it's a kind of uh, subfield of AI, although these days a lot of people seem to think AI only means machine learning. But um, we, we, we were there first, long before these machine learning people became so uh, so kind of dominant. Um, yeah, and, uh, and I mean, it's all about sort of formalizing uh, knowledge in a way that allows you to kind of reason about it, answer questions about the, the knowledge, reveal things that you didn't know you know, uh, because uh, it requires some kind of complicated reasoning process thing. And, and nowadays, I mean, the main sort of incarnation of that you see is in things like knowledge graphs and large scale kind of knowledge resources that are used pretty, pretty so widely. Of course, you know, it's a great honor personally to receive the award. And I mean, it's particularly nice to receive an award that's named after an important pioneer of algorithm design, which is sort of what I think of myself as doing in large part. Um, but also, I'd like to say that I think it's really important as sort of recognition for work in the area. Uh, I, I don't want to represent it as being my personal work. It's work that, you know, I've carried out with a whole bunch of collaborators, you know, really brilliant people that I've been lucky enough to work with. And of course, builds on the sort of work of innumerable other researchers ac across the area. So I see it as a sort of award for the award for the area. Let's put it that way. Right. At the beginning, I was mainly motivated by applications in medical and bioinformatics. And in, in particular, I started out working with a group that was looking at the development of large structured vocabularies that they use in, in a lot in medicine. Um, and basically they use those to sort of standardize exchange and query health data, which, you know, is extremely useful, for example, in epidemiological studies. And, and I mean, being very topical, obviously, there must be a huge amount of research going on into COVID and all the kind of associated risks, treatments, uh, whatever, at the moment. A lot of that involves looking at data that's coming in from all over the world how, how do you integrate that data it's coming from all different health systems using different languages uh, well, well basically they use these large vocabularies that structure medical knowledge uh, to... obviously these reasoning systems are more like an embedded technology somewhat like a database actually and uh, I mean, typically nobody really notices those things until they break. While they're working smoothly, it's just run purring away underneath, you know, like the engine in your car, who knows how that really works. So you put your foot down on the accelerator pedal and by some magic, the car goes forward. And yeah, you only really notice the, the engine when it stops working. Uh, and, and reasoning systems are kind of the same. I mean, they're underpinning a lot of stuff that we're using these days. Uh, I mean, for example, all these digital assistants that have become very popular now, Google, Alexa, Siri, I guess most people are using them to some extent. Actually, they all have these huge knowledge graphs, which are kind of, you know, this explicit representation of knowledge in the world. Uh, that they use to support whatever they do to answer any direct questions you ask and they all use reasoning systems to help them develop and maintain those huge knowledge resources so you know when you're asking when you're saying hey siri um you know how tall is the eiffel tower that's my canonical example and siri will come back and tell you it's however many hundred meters tall it knows that because it looked in its knowledge graph and you know that information is stored there and it keeps all that stuff in good order using reasoning systems amongst other tools. Uh, and you know, I already mentioned the medical applications and actually they have now become really mainstream. There's an organization called SNOMED that 
um, builds and maintains uh, a very large medical terminology ontology that's used in the National Health Service and the health services of more than 80 other countries around the world. And they actually build and maintain that thing using a reasoner that we developed at Oxford as the sort of increasing recognition that this kind of uh, explicit representation of expert knowledge and uh, the sort of learned knowledge from data, we need to kind of combine those two uh, AI strands together. And that if we can get that right and develop uh, more robust AI systems that can also explain their behavior and that we, you know, we can guarantee won't do things like running red lights and so on for some reason, you know, we never understood because they learned some, some strange uh, thing. Uh, you know, if we can combine all that and get the best of both worlds, I think uh, the sort of potential power and deployment for AI systems in the future will be really tremendous.